Welcome to worship with St. Luke's online for the Feast of St. Luke's, our patronal festival. Let us pray. Lord God, who chose St. Luke to reveal the mystery of your love for the poor, grant that we persevere as one heart and one soul, and that all nations may see your salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with our spirit. Almighty God. Unto you all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom those truths are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may be.
Let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired Luke the physician to proclaim the love and the healing power of your Son, give your church by the grace of the Spirit and the medicine of the gospel the same love and power to heal through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Honor physicians for their services, for the Lord created them, for their gift of healing comes from the Most High, and they are rewarded by the King. The skill of physicians makes them distinguished, and in the presence of the great they are admired. The Lord created medicines out of the earth, and the sensible will not despise them. And he gave skill to human beings that he might be glorified in his marvelous works. By them the physician heals and takes away pain. The pharmacist makes a mixture from them. God's works will never be finished, and from him health spreads over all the earth. My child, when you are ill, do not delay, but pray to the Lord and he will heal you. Give up your faults and direct your hands rightly and cleanse your heart from all sin. Then give the physician his place, for the Lord created him. Do not leave him, for you need him. There may come a time when recovery lies in the hands of physicians, for they too pray to the Lord that he grant them success in diagnosis and in healing for the sake of preserving life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. 
so also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to thee, o Lord. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee and a report about him spread through, the, through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, 
and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of Christ. Good morning, beloved and Christ. We welcome you to today's homily, big day of celebration for us, Patronal Festival, St. Luke's Day. Let us pray. A prayer that aligns to today, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent out his word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Our prayer today is whatever form of ailment, sickness, disease, be it physical, spiritual, in the body, soul, mind, family, communities, nation, our Lord will heal all in Jesus' name. Amen. The chosen theme for today's meditation is the God my healer, as we have prayed. And my thanks is from the gospel that was read to us. Luke 4, 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set free the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's key. Today's service is set aside as a three-in-one service, Feast of St. Luke, our patron, and that ties to the history of this church as a parish. It's a day we also honor physicians and all care workers. And a healing service. It's also part of the service, which we expect will run concurrently with the administration of the secret elements. That is, during the Holy Communion, they will be stand by the left side of the altar for anointing, for healing. St. Luke the physician flourished in the first century. His feast generally celebrated in church history. October 18th. He is the author of the Gospel of Luke and Acts of the Apostle, as a companion of St. Paul. He is the most literary of the New Testament writers. And information about his life is scanty, but he was referred to in Pauline letters as a physician and a gentile. He accompanied Paul on several missionary journeys. He's a patron of physicians and health care workers. Luke is first mentioned in the letters of Paul as the latter's co-worker and his beloved physician. This mention of Luke as a Gentile by Paul, Colossians 4, 10 to 11. Born in Antioch, a medical man by profession. St. Paul speaks of him as our beloved Luke, the physician. Colossians 4, 
14. St. Luke is a patron of physicians and soldiers, as I've said, and all healthcare workers. So the collect of today, I read again, Almighty God who collect Luke the physician, who prays is in the gospel to be an evangelist and physician of soul. May it please thee that by the wholesome medicines of the doctrine delivered by him, all the diseases of our soul may be healed through the merits of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is taken from the Book of Common Prayer, 1962. Now let's delve a bit into the history of our church, which I can say I'm still a student of reading studying, discovering, making inquiries, and learning. In the late 1880s, the website says the church was founded 1889. The nearest Anglican church attended by residents of Fort Rouge District was Holy Trinity. It was, while it was within easy walking distance for the adults, it was too far for the children to go to Sunday, especially during winter. At that 1880, I'm not sure if they had the number of cars and the number of buses we have today. So the curate of Holy Trinity therefore suggested to one of the lay, lead, lay readers of his church that a Sunday school be started in Fort Rouge. A suitable meeting place was found in a vacant store on Maria Street, which is now Stradbrook Avenue. As attendance grew, a parishioner offered a house, which soon was filled to overflowing. Funds were secured to erect a Sunday school building, which was formally opened 1891 by Archbishop McRae, assisted by Bishop Mackenzie River and the rector of Holy Trinity. A mission for adults was established at the same time, and regular Sunday service commenced 17th October 1893. For a while, J.A. Richardson, a theology student at St. John's College, who later became the first rector of St. Luke's Church, conducted services. With the growth in population and church-related activity expanded sufficiently in the next four years, the Archbishop McCree established the new parish of St. Luke's 14 April 1897. This was called from the government of Manitoba sites and history of churches that are in Winnipeg. I will do some skipping. This building had its first service conducted 19 February 1905 by the Right Reverend Dr. S. P. Matterson. There was a long incumbency of Reverend Canon W. Patel Honey, who was the fourth rector of St. Luke's Church, 1909 to 1942. At this period, there was growth in population, there was expansion of the church, beautification process, chancel, new pews. There was a particular rector that was a chaplain of Winnipeg Grenadiers during the World War I. And 1923, an oak cross had been set up on the Viami River, in memory of soldiers killed during the war, was handed to the church for safekeeping. 1910, Organ started taking shape. 30 stop Caversan instrument was enlarged to 36 stops. In 1953, it was reconstructed by English builders, Hill, Norman, and Baird, to four manuals, 61 stop, later revised to 59 stops in 1979 by local organ technicians, Arubok and Manto. And the solid state capture action was added 2001. The instrument remains the largest pipe organ in Winnipeg. This is from the government side. So if my figures and my dates are wrong, my apologies. Healthcare community, we celebrate you today on St. Luke's Day, our patronal festival, St. Luke's the Physician. We understand and we know 
They are your sacrifice of love, your sacrifice of time, your sacrifice of giving your time to the well-being, to the health of the young, of the old, of the middle age, cannot be quantified in monetary terms. As we celebrate you is our prayer that God will reward your service to humanity and mankind. We thank you all. The Old Testament reading, Sirach 38, 1, says, Honor physicians for their services, for the Lord created them. Man is a spirit, soul, and body. Today is a day set aside for the church to acknowledge the healing power of God in time past. Continue in prayers for God to heal us all in our body, mind, and soul. God can heal all diseases. Psalm 107, 20, Matthew 10, 1. God can heal our businesses, finance, and relationships. Philippians 4, 19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches, which has given us through Christ Jesus. God can heal our nations and world of natural disasters and war. If my people that are called by my name humble themselves, cry unto me, I will heal their land. We have read about the disaster of flooding that took over the state of Florida, came through hurricane. Lives were lost, properties were destroyed. It's our prayer that God will heal all. We know of the war going on in the Middle East. It's the God that can heal. Finally, brothers and sisters, my personal experience as a physician and priest, God has healed many with terminal illness, barrenness, difficult financial situations, difficult relationships, just to mention a few. The drama in the labor room is only God that takes care of normal delivery. I've seen stroke patients, cerebrovascular accident that recovered through healing. Bones patients, terminal cancers, just to mention a few. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. I believe in one God. Let us now demonstrate the hope that fills our hearts by turning to God in prayer. Spirit of God, we give thanks for the constancy and beauty of creation, for the breath of winds, the racing clouds, the glory of the trees in their autumn colors, for the procession of days and nights, the rhythm of seasons, and the wonder of stars. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. At this time of our patronal festival, we pray for our parish, for our presence in this community, that people may find here the means of a deeper relationship with God. 
We pray that the good news that we spread always heed the physical and social needs of our listeners. We ask that we may be a sign of your loving generosity, always ready to give to those who have less and to welcome strangers in our midst. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our troubled world. We pray for those who suffer most from war, the homeless, the orphaned, the hungry, the innocent. Help the world to turn from warlike ways and to accept God's gift of peace. We remember especially the people of Gaza, Lebanon, Israel, Ukraine, Sudan, and all other areas in our world where there is conflict or the threat of conflict. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose lives are overshadowed by physical pain or anguish of spirit, that they might know the healing touch of God. We pray, too, for those on our parish prayer list. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. Give those who mourn strength and comfort. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends and hold them before you in our thoughts. Do we bring before you our own particular needs? With confidence, we share these with you, for you are the God who lives among us. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. Creator, make us glad all our days for such items as bus- of business as pumpkins to carve, music to listen to, birds to watch, crisp fall days, children to clean, dishes to wash, and people to love. Make us glad for high and low places, for great and small moments, and for all the configurations of life that make it exciting. Spirit of the living God, hear our prayer. On this Feast of St. Luke, may all of us follow with joy and simplicity the great throng of people who have gone before us with steady strides or stumbling and wandering, but finding their way back to God, who is the way. Creator, we offer you our prayers, some in words, others written in our hearts. Read our hearts, hear our prayers, and continue to shed on us your light. Amen. Here, what comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all that truly turned to him. Come unto me, all the labor and a heavy leading, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and is the propitiation for our sins. And not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Ye that truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confessions to Almighty God. Almighty God. Which 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy had promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with a healthy repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. God of compassion, you are a strong tower for all who trust in you. Be now and evermore our defense, that we may proclaim the only name under heaven given for health and salvation. The name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
it is very meet, right, and abounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, who in the multitude of thy sins has compassed us about with so great a cloud of witnesses, that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them may receive the crown of glory that faded not away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, O Lord, magnify thy glorious name, forever praising thee and saying, Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy this give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nation upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's only institution, remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you, do this a remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, a remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants, 
with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of holy bread of eternal life and the cup of the everlasting salvation, the memorial which he had commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and true faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. I will pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to say, The gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Living God, may we who are shared in these holy mysteries enjoy health of body and mind and witness faithfully to your gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.